This is uh, the view on adjuvant treatment of gastric cancer. It would be correct from a European perspective to say it's more about new adjuvant. And of course, in these times, it's not always easy to take the European view. Europe, Europe is a colorful and uh, very heterogeneous continent uh, with uh, some problems, as you know, sometimes like uh, gastric cancer. And here's my conflict of interest. Uh, I really want to say that I love to take the European perspective. I think it's important that we do. And I hope that our politicians will be wise enough to solve the current economic and political pro problems and that we don't re repeat some mistakes that we did in the past. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now let's go back to gastric cancer. What is the situation of gastric cancer in Europe? Uh, it's really a, a disease with a dismal prognosis. It's uh, ranking within the 10 uh, cancer diseases with the poorest prognosis. The truth is that only 25% of European gastric cancer patients become long-term survivors. Uh, this is uh, just to summarize uh, our algorithms that we follow in Europe. It's clear that for the very early cancers, there is no role for multimodal therapy. Uh, most centers would agree that for T1, also T2 and zero staged cancers, uh, there is a role for surgery alone, but clearly for the T3, T4 resectable cancers and for those that are deemed to be nodal positive, there is a role for perioperative chemotherapy. Radio, chem radio chemo can be an alternative in EG junction adenocarcinomas. We come to that. But where is uh, the clear statement for perioperative chemotherapy in Europe based on? It's based on two studies uh, that have been performed in the UK and in France, uh, the MAGIC study and uh, the French study. You see that these two studies have a very, very similar and comparable design. Uh, both studies gave perioperative uh, chemotherapy eight to nine weeks before surgery and after surgery. And the only really di real difference is that uh, the MAGIC study included apirubicin, whereas the French study worked with cisplatin and 5-FU alone. And this is uh, the results of the UK MAGIC study, which was really more a study on gastric cancer, not so much on EG junction cancer, with a convincing survival difference of 13% after five years. Almost superimposable, the end results, the final results of the French study, which was really more a study of ED junction cancers, 14% survival difference after two years. So this is where our European standard comes from. So apirubicin or no apirubicin, that is the question. And who should we ask uh, to give us a question? Doesn't move? Yes, here he's coming. That's David, who is on the auditorium, and he tells us. And he, in the previous session, he just uh, showed us the results from the OE5 study, which uh, I, I want to underline that is a study for esophageal adenocarcinoma and ED junction cancer. Uh, David Cunningham and his group, uh, he compared two cycles of CF preoperatively, not perioperatively, preoperatively, with four cycles of ECX. And uh, this is the final results uh, concerning the survival, showing no major difference in terms of uh, overall survival. So does this give us the answer? Should epirubicin retire? Uh, this is my personal view. Stop, don't go too fast. OE5 is a study on esophageal OG junction cancer. The MAGIC study which uh, investigated three times ECF followed by surgery, followed by three times ECF, remains the largest perioperative study ever done in gastric cancer. So ECF periop remains one valid option, not the only valid option, but one valid option for treating patients with locally advanced gastric cancer in Europe. We can discuss about that. There is another thing I would like to draw your attention to. In the UK study, as well as in the French study, 
Uh, there was a good compliance to pre-operative chemotherapy. Most patients received uh, the foreseen eight to nine weeks. Uh, in contrast, uh, post-operative compliance was not so good. Only 50 to 55 percent of the patients were able to receive or to tolerate post-operative chemotherapy. So the statements I would make here, it is um, possible to give preoperative chemotherapy. Uh, Post-operative chemotherapy may become difficult, so we have a good reason to start preoperatively. Is the post-operative chemotherapy really important? This is a question which is often asked, but we don't know the answer yet what the role of adjuvant part really is in the perioperative setting. There is another question, should we switch the regimen in preoperative non-responders? Again, this is an often asked question and I do not have an answer. We don't have data yet if it makes sense to start with another post-operative treatment if pre-op was not effective. This is something which is interesting and maybe also important when you Look in these two studies, UK Magic and French study, when you look at the subgroup effects with regard uh, to tumor location, you can really see that uh, tumors uh, located at the EG junction were those who had the highest, the best benefit from pre-perioperative chemotherapy. And this is an interesting finding because we, when, uh, if we want to compare indirectly the things that we have seen with preoperative chemoradiation cross regimen and with uh, what we see uh, with chemotherapy alone, uh, we should uh, take care of this, um, of this subgroup analysis. Obviously, chemotherapy works best in the EG junction tumors. So I would say that for most centers in Europe, um, they have switched to preoperative uh, chemoradiation when it comes to esophageal cancer, also the distal adenocarcinomas. Uh, almost all bigger centers uh, in Europe, they use uh, perioperative chemotherapy for gastric cancers, but when we are going to the EG junction to type two, type three tumors, we are really uncertain. Uh, which is uh, the best way to go, chemoradiation or perioperative chemotherapy. This is not yet clear and needs to be studied. Another thing that is currently studied is the integration of radiation into uh, perioperative uh, chemotherapy. There is the CRITIC study led by Cornelis van der Velde, who is in the auditorium. Uh, he integrated radiation into perioperative uh, chemotherapy according to the MAGIC regimen and uh, the study has uh, finished accrual. We are eagerly waiting for the results. I don't know, maybe in 2017 we will see. And the Top Gear study is ongoing. It has almost the same design but radiation is integrated into the preoperative phase. We have now recruited 200 patients. It's a collaborative work between Australia, Canada and the ERTC. Are there other ways, uh, other options to optimize uh, perioperative chemotherapy? Let's talk about taxanes, about anti-angiogenic treatment, and about anti-HER2. Taxanes is interesting. Uh, we have done a matched analysis from th uh, three major centers in Germany that used docetaxel platin 5 ifu based preoperative chemotherapy and consistently we have seen a high histopathological complete response rate uh, going up to 15%. Uh, this was the inspiration for the randomized FLOT4 study, which randomizes four cycles of 5 uh, leucovarin oxaliplatin docetaxel, eight weeks, uh, with uh, three cycles of ECF magic regimen. And now at this year's ESCO meeting, uh, the people from the Frankfurt group reported the interim analysis on histopathological complete response rate. And as you can see in the next slide, if it uh, comes to the next slide, I don't know what happens. Uh, can you give me the next slide, please? Yes, here. Uh, you can see that uh, in concordance to what we have seen in our pooled analysis, the histopathological complete response rate goes up to 15% with the flawed regimen as compared to 6% with ECF. Uh, this is interesting, uh, but uh, of course, um, before we 
uh, advocate a new standard of care, we have to wait for the survival data from 700 randomized patients. It's a signal, but it's not yet clear how this will impact on survival. This year is the integration of bevacizumab uh, into the MAGIC regimen, another study from our colleagues in UK. Um, maybe we will see uh, the results in, uh, at this year's ECHO meeting. I have written 2016, but it may all already happen in 2015. We will see. This is also interesting. And of course, HER2 um, is an interesting topic. As you all know, in the metastatic setting in the TOGA trial, we have seen that approximately 16% of patients with gastric cancer have HER2 overexpression and the addition of trastuzumab to conventional chemotherapy improves prognosis, prolongs survival, so it's really rational uh, to put this uh, into the perioperative setting, and we have just started the innovation study, uh, which is organized by the ERTC, which is done in collaboration with, uh, with the Dutch colleagues and also with our colleagues from Korea. Patients will be randomized between chemotherapy alone second arm chemotherapy plus trastuzumab, third arm uh, trastuzumab and pertuzumab in addition to chemotherapy. We are just opening the first centers in Europe. So my summary for Europe is perioperative chemotherapy is the standard of care in Europe. It's indicated for stages two and three. Neoadjuvant chemo radiation is an alternative option in ED junction cancers. There are ongoing studies on the value of radiation in addition to perioperative chemotherapy, uh, the Dutch Critics study and uh, the multinational Top Gear study. And there are new drugs uh, which are being tested. Uh, we, are, we have talked about taxanes, about bevacizumab, and about anti-HER2 directed monoclonal antibodies in the ERTC innovation study. So that's it. I thank you very much for your kind attention.